Hello and welcome to episode 128 of Vokta Gaming. I am your host, the vocal terrorist, Jesse Rain, and we are here with SC Forum Tuesdays. First stop, allow me to introduce our players. Today we have for you a Terran vs Terran starring. First up, our Red Terran. He is not our SC Forum hero for today. Oh no, 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 no. He is our villain for today. His name is Wingnut. But opposing him, the same as last week, he is our SC Forum hero. The man who sent me this replay. His name is Finns. So, big, big things happening with Vokta Gaming. Uh, I mentioned this last Friday on my own channel. But this will be the first video that goes live on the Temple Hub channel. Uh, as you should be able to see up in this top right corner, there should be the Temple Hub logo there. And basically, I have been uh, added to the Temple Hub group as a director. I will continue to make Vox Gaming as normal. But as well as on my own channel, they will also go live on the Temple Hub channel. Uh, where there are tons and tons of game related videos. There's the main Temple Hub channel. There's Temple RPG and Temple FPS as well. They also do uh, various graphics. They have the Temple Graphics channel. Uh, basically, it's really, really exciting. Uh, I, I get to be a part of this community that is all about promoting game commentary and uh, graphics up online. It's just great. Um, I've been in a group chats with the guys. As we see, Wingnut doing a sneaky, sneaky barracks, but a very strange placement. Because, like, this is right the path uh, that generally SCVs would go. But as it is, um, interestingly enough, Finn's choosing to scout the close base first. And therefore does not see it. He's not going to take the Zelnaga Watchtower yet. So he does not know the second barracks is going to be out. Finn's, meanwhile, with only one barracks to his name. Now, if he goes for the early expansion here, Finn's could be in trouble. I'll get back to my point in a bit. I just want to see if Wingnut, uh, what exactly Wingnut's going to do if Finns is going to scout this because this game could be over very shortly. If he builds this command center, he's going to struggle to hold it. It looks like it's happening. He is building rooms there. The question is, does he build a bunker? That's the big question. Okay, so the command center goes down. He needs a bunker here. He needs at least one. And oh my. Okay, this is now going into three barracks. Okay, this is heavy, heavy pressure from Wingnut now. He's going all the way up to three barracks. He's going to mass marines and then attack. And right now, Finns only has one barracks and no bunker. He has the money to make a bunker. The question is, will he? No, he's adding a second barracks, but this is late. Very late in comparison. This is going to finish after Wingnut's third. And he's already massing Marines. The SCV goes forward to scout. He sees the four Marines positioned at the front. That should tell him that this is a one barracks expand. Precisely because at this point in time you get four Marines. You stop SCV scouting. So if Wingnut knows what he's doing. He should know that that is a one barracks expand. And now a bunker is going down. The four... Oh, and it's going up to three racks. Ah, but will it all finish in time? Now Wingnut has a nice group of Marines. He's going to attack right now. Bringing his other Marines with him. Not bringing any SCVs. Just bringing the, uh, the one that built the barracks. So the question is, can Finns hold this? The bunker is going to finish. It should just about finish. He needs to get his Marines in there. He's got one more joining them. Three more Marines are being made at this point, but Wingnut is going in, and Finns is not pulling into the bunker. He does now, but the bunker is not in an optimal position because Wingnut is already past it. He can run straight past, and now Finns has to pull his SCVs, and Wingnut is doing a great deal of damage here. Wingnut now, with this huge bank of money, should expand at this point. Now he's denied Finns his expansion. He should be dropping an expansion. As it is, he's just continuing to produce a mass marines. He has four marines here that are not coming into the battle. The bunker is empty. If he brought them in, he'd be doing a ton more damage, but they're just standing there. He's got them rallied here, but his control is off. Wingnuts is expanding at home, however. Finns does finally take that down. There are five more marines now. Taking down a bunker with no units in it. But it looks like Finns now has enough units here. 
that this is no longer a problem. He is going to get rid of this attack. Now, interestingly, Wingnut did some decent damage with that, but he is still going to be behind because Finns has the command center already built. Simple as that. He needs to float these barracks on home uh, before Finns pushes out and catches them. And the fact is, Wingnut is now behind in supply. That kind of attack needs to do a ton of damage, or you need to do it as part of an expansion. Anyway, Finns is safe for the moment. We should have a little bit of downtime now. Uh, in fact, Wingnut, interestingly, is choosing to double expand. That is how he's going to try and get back into this matchup. Uh, but I am. we should have a bit of downtime now while he gets that expansion up. While Finns rebuilds essentially his army and his SC, he's dropping a tech lab and now getting a factory. Uh, Going to go into siege tank production, I should assume. I want to explain for my new viewers on Temple Hub what SC Forum Tuesdays actually is. I'm part of an online uh, community, obviously a forum, www.scforum.eu, where basically, again, it's just this really cool StarCraft community for European players, uh, where we just hang out, we have a lot of fun, we play different games and stuff. We obviously play a ton of StarCraft. Uh, we have an esports team that sometimes go on there, uh, Team Carnage, who I... Um, occasionally do a bit of work with. They're really nice guys. We sometimes have Bling on there, the uh, the best UK player. Everyone got you gotta love Bling. Everyone love Bling. You love Bling. I love Bling. Everyone loves Bling. But he sometimes on there. But basically, what SC Forum Tuesdays is is a chance for any member of the SC Forum EU community to send me a replay, and I cast it right here on Vokta Gaming. So, okay, what we have is Wingnut floating his barracks home, adding another one and a factory. We have Finns going up to Super Bio, matching Wingnut's racks production. We're also getting a factory and a starport. The reactor there is not for the factory, that's going to lift and the starport will go on it. He's going to get double medivacs out ASAP. Wingnut be wants adding another barracks and an engineering bay. Okay, he needs the engineering bay because uh, if you're going this heavy bio, you need to hit those upgrades. And right now, Finns is ahead because he is getting that Terran Infantry Weapons Level 1 already before Wingnut even started to build that. But he does only have the one tech lab on the barracks. He's already got Combat Shield, now getting Stim, not getting Concussive Shell, obviously, yet, but he hasn't actually made any more orders, so going full into Marine. Wingnut does scan, sees exactly what's there. Now the question is, will Finn scout this base? No he will not, because he's going to come in here and die. Interestingly he's going to see only Marines there, he's going to see no tank shots, so he's going to expect zero tanks out yet, because of course the factory's only just finished. And what is this? Wingnut is okay. Wingnut believes himself to be Marine King, and is going to build nothing but Marines forever. He has a factory in the tech lab, but he doesn't have the money to make... What is this? Okay, so... Here's how StarCraft 2 works, right? You make production facilities, you create your units. But you need money to, to do this. You need uh, money to keep the production cycles up. Basically, you should not have enough, so many production buildings that they ever sit there idle, they ever sit there unused, like this factory is currently doing. Um, I really cannot see the point of him having got the factory with the tech lab on it if he's not going to make any siege tanks ever. This was his really, really good chance. Get ahead in the siege tank count and you can really, really crush a Terran enemy. As it is though, he's not doing that and now Finns is going to be totally outclassing him. Finns getting medivacs out of the reactive starport. He makes two at a time. He's getting siege tanks. He's getting siege mode. That's about to be complete. Finns is going to have a huge advantage here. Wingnut playing really badly. I like this, by the way, from both players. Getting the sensor tower at this level of play. It allows you to spot for any medevac drops coming into the back of your base. I really, really like it. It's also a help. You often see uh, it in TVT late game getting forward sensor towers. So you can see when his siege tanks unseach. As it is, Finns is going for a big drop now. Using all of his medevacs. Getting a ton of marines in them. But the sensor tower will see that. It will be spotted the minute it crosses this line here. And so, theoretically, if Wingnut's playing well, he'll grab all his marines, get them back here and kill them. His Sim City, however, is very bad. It's going to take his marines quite a while to traverse this. They will funnel. So it's quite possible that Finns will be able to do something with that. 
Uh, leaving this one medevac behind now. Okay, it's going to cross this line. Wingnut will see it coming. If he's paying attention, you can see those exclamation marks. He drops all the supply depots so that his SCVs can escape and his Marines can run in. Siege tank is here with it. It doesn't siege up, so it's not going to kill these Marines as fast. But this is a huge, huge attack. A lot of supply going down for Wingnut now. And the fact is, Vince is ahead at this point where he can trade like this because he has the units. And oh my god, this, the tank siege is up. The Marines are still in siege range and they are going down. Oh my, Wingnut losing so many units there. Finn's now at home getting up his third base. So the economy is going to start to equalise. And Finn's having done so much damage here. Wingnut lost so much money time and more importantly so many units. The eBay sadly is not going to die it looks like before the upgrade finishes. So that upgrade will continue. Finally the siege tank goes down, loses a two medevacs, but they will fly away now. Wow, incredible drop harass there by Finns. Did so much damage. And I mean look at the army he's got at home. It did not hurt him whatsoever to lose that amount of units. His production is still excellent. His minerals are down near zero constantly. Playing really, really well right now. Now Wingnut has these bio facilities, all these barracks, but look, there's just no money. Look at all of these uh, unit producing structures not being used right now. And he's adding a starport, which he should have done about eight minutes ago. This is really, really late. And Finns is going to push out with a huge army. Finns, I must say, playing this really well, getting all his upgrades. Infantry armor and infantry weapons level two on the way. Vehicle weapons level one on the way. That's the siege tank splash. Adding another factory now so we can double the siege tank production. And now he's going to siege up over this gold base. Sorry, Wingnut, you are not expanding here. Wingnut is also expanding to the top right location. So if he can take and hold that without Finns knowing about it, perhaps he can catch up. Because, of course, his economy will once again skyrocket ahead of Finns's. But the fact is that Finns is playing this so well. And Wingnut is playing, I have to say this, and I am sorry I when I have to say this about a player. He is playing very poorly. He is not playing StarCraft 2 how it needs to be played. He just has, look at all this. I mean, he has the money now to make all these Marines, but he's not on top of his macro. All of these should be hotkeyed. Uh, say you hotkey it to five, you hit the number five, and then a, -A, 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 -A million times and make tons of Marines and kill your opponent. As it is, Wingnut's third is about to go down now. Finns has left these siege tanks behind though. Wingnut's Marines stim in. They will kill the siege tanks. Very nicely done. Finns only now has his bio here. The rest of his units are at home. His Medivacs is uh, other siege tanks. But that's fine. He's adding two command centers now. He's going to take the map as and when he feels like it because he has the army superiority. And because of that, you can take expansions and not have to worry about your opponent finding them. You don't have to hide them. Wingnut Scanzo is going to see that there are zero tanks up on there. This is a force he could attack into if he had the Medivacs. He's only got one right now, and it's not going to heal the units enough. Now, he does have a siege tank out with siege mode, so he should siege at the bottom of this ramp. That's perfect. And now, moving with the Marines. Get the vision out. Oh, there goes some Marines to the siege tank. No! Oh, good scan there from Wingnut, though. Allows the tank to get vision up there and drop it. However, it's not enough. These Marines run forward. They kill the tank, and oh my god, Wingnut Supply plummets. He's down to 70 to Finns' 184. Finns just absolutely smashing this game. This has got to be close to GG now. Wingnut is not going to be able to expand out on the map, but the minute Finns finds an expansion, he's going to kill it. Finns can take the rest of this map. It looks to me like Finns is going to take this game, and look at this army now. This army, if we just compare units... We have 73 SCVs to 51, so he has the economic advantage. 12 medevacs to 1, 4 tanks to 1, and 77 marines to 20. That is game. If Finns attacks now, it is dead. He has the upgrade advantage. His, all his bios at 2-2. Two, two. Uh, to Wingnuts, is 1-1. One, one. And his siege tanks have plus 1 attack as well. Finns playing wonderfully. He's completely full of supply. And now he's putting command centers down wherever he wants them. Does stim into those siege tanks though, that is a bad idea. What he should be doing now is setting up a contain like this, forcing Wingnut to lose his units to hold this off. 
while he can then just expand across the map, taking the gold base here as we see. But I mean, for me, Finns has got this. Wingnut's trying to expand around here, but if Finns ever gets winner, and it's the only thing I think is lacking from Finns today, is his scouting of those expansions. Those are the places you should be checking when you have an opponent penned in like this. And now he's going to drop up into the main, going to elevate her, it looks like, his Marines and Siege Tanks up. And it's going to take... Oh, Wingnut, in fact, going forward with it, not coming back into the main. Going to attack from behind. Sims in, tries to get that sea tank, but Sims inside the range of the sea tank, so again, the sea tank is hitting them, and his bio is melting under this. All his tanks will now die, this is going to be game over. Finn's now taking down the production facilities, there we are, the GG, the well played, and Finn's, our SC Forum hero, takes the game. I am loving it, wow. What a start to the week, I will of course... Be back tomorrow with the first of this week's pro replays. I don't know what it is yet because I haven't actually downloaded any more replays. Uh, I'm thinking it might be Slayer's Golden. I might do some MLG stuff. We will see. Basically, um, yeah, we'll see. It depends how I feel when I get home from work tomorrow. Anyway, a big, big thank you to all of you viewers who've been watching me on Voxer Gaming. Do not worry, the videos will remain on the Voxer Gaming channel as well as Temple Hub. But I really want to say a big thank you to the guys at Temple Hub for allowing me this opportunity to work with them, uh, to be part of the big chats we have. There's so much innovation going on there, so many creative people. It's really, really uh, incredible to be part of. Of course, if you live in the UK, especially near Manchester, this Sunday I will be at the Kyoto Lounge Bar in Manchester, it's opposite the Manchester Metropolitan University, for the finals of IPL4. Oh yeah! Are you excited? Because I am. I cannot wait to get down there. I know it's Easter Sunday, but screw Easter. Bring your eggs with you. It's going to be sick. Please, please, please get down. I went there for MLG and it was amazing. As well as six big screens showing the event, we will have eight PCs set up so that you too can play some StarCraft 2 while you are there and be coached by Masters League players. That happened last time I was there. We had a few Masters League guys going around helping the lower level guys out, giving them some really, really good strategies. It was so much fun. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and I will see you all.